Welcome back to the channel. This is the Earth Science Classroom. This video is looking at meteorology, atmospheric science, and a little bit of atmospheric physics, and looking at the structure of a tropical cyclone, how these amazingly large atmospheric phenomena form, and how each of these cyclones have different components that add up to make this amazingly rotating structure of clouds. This is the Earth Science Classroom. Since the development and deployment of satellites looking back at the Earth, you're seeing this amazing hurricane or tropical cyclone system whereby the satellite is looking from an aerial perspective down onto these amazingly large storms and collection of clouds. And you have this sustained winds of over 74 miles per hour, which is over one minute duration and recorded about 10 meters above the surface. That qualifies as a cyclone or a hurricane or a typhoon based on where you are on the planet and which ocean basin it forms in. Now, this rotating storm is a collection of clouds, thunderstorm clouds, cumulonimbus clouds, stratus and cirrus clouds, all in one complex moving system. And it forms over very warm tropical ocean water, very large body of water that is above 28 degrees Celsius or about 81 degrees Fahrenheit, enough to stimulate and catalyze enough evaporation and water vapor to condense to form this amount or this mass of clouds required to form a tropical cyclone. So you have the conversion of thermal energy into both kinetic and mechanical energy. So taking a view of this amazing tropical cyclone from a profile or side view perspective, you can get a better idea of how these phenomena are structured and the anatomy of these storms. So you have these gigantic, very tall, vertical, cumulonimbus cloud formations and structures that are formed around a central eye. Now, this eye generally forms when you reach a certain wind speed and a certain air pressure, which together work to create this storm system and the collection of clouds in this size of storm. So these can be between 150 to 300 miles in diameter and reach over 15 kilometers in altitude at the tops of these clouds. And the clouds at the top are basically a cirrus canopy so to speak, with the winds rising up, ascending, and flowing either side to create this massive top of this circulating storm. Now the eye forms with relatively low winds and still low pressure, but the air will descend down in the eye and create calm and generally clear conditions. Now this eye can range between 20 to 40 miles based on the size of the storm and either side of the eye you get the more extreme part of the storm the strongest winds are around the edge of the eye and these are very thick and vertical and tall and very dense cumulonimbus clouds which we call the eye wall now this can fluctuate in the width or depth of the eye wall and even have a second eye wall in some cases based on the storm's formation and how it mutates and evolves during its life cycle and this is also where you have the heaviest most torrential rain and threat of flooding and you have this uplift this ascending air being pulled up low pressure system to create these massive eye wall clouds and then beyond the eye wall going away from the eye, the center, you have these concentric rain bands formed of both cumulonimbus, and in between that will be stratus clouds, and they're gonna form precip, but not as heavy as the eye wall, and this whole system is going to be rotating and moving across the ocean surface, as long as the ocean's warm, picking up more thermal energy, more water vapor, and to continue the angular momentum of this storm as it is rotating and moving and being pushed and deflected according to the Corus effect in the northern hemisphere to the right and the southern hemisphere to the left and the rotation is counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere and it's clockwise in the southern hemisphere. So these storms are basically a collection of different kinds of clouds with just an enormous amount of thermal energy 
producing water vapor, evaporation, condensation, a lot of latent heat and rising air and the balance comes from the descending air in the eye and the flow of the air at the top of the troposphere with the cirrus canopy. We're developing technology over the past few decades and the ability for planes to fly directly over these storms and gather atmospheric sounding data directly from the storm, the eye wall, the eye, and have a more detailed approach to what is happening inside these storms as they're rotating, as they're moving, as they are strengthening over warm water or as they are proceeding over certain ocean basins towards various mainlands and coastal areas and have the ability to better understand how this storm is going to move on its path, be deflected around perhaps a high ridge or with the cause effect and have a better idea of how long these storms are going to last for and where and which part of the storm is going to hit land and we can predict these in much more detail thanks to the growing technology and the ability to take accurate sounding measurements from the storm as it happens thank you so much for watching the video i hope you enjoyed it if you like it please subscribe and hit the like button if you like more on this content please check out my channel which has all these videos on earth science